Hi, I'm Mark, producer of Roundtable, a TV series born here in New York City at the legendary Manhattan Neighborhood Network Studios. The exchange of ideas is important, and that is why we bring to you the following presentation. Please watch. Welcome to Single Shot Show at Manhattan Neighborhood Networks Roundtable. Tonight we will be talking about a very peculiar area of photography, about telling stories of people with the objects. It's uh, indeed uh, much easier to find an object and take a picture of it, but uh, there is what may way more to it uh, hidden under the surface. And in order to discuss it, we invited photographer we already seen here and talked about his unique approach with the beginnings and the ends. Thomas I appreciate Park. you inviting me again, Alex. <laughs> Hello, Thomas, and Good. very happy to see you here again. My and pleasure. Yes, indeed. It's much easier to photograph something that doesn't move or moves in a predictable manner, not like people do. But uh, on the other hand, choosing is probably the most uh, tricky part. Yes. Uh, well, sometimes the object catches my eye and it has a design that looks almost like you should photograph this, you know. It's, and sometimes like, I refer it to paintings because it looks like paintings, the color schemes you and did. the offsets of the colors, you know. And I've been doing that for actually mm, three, four years, but I usually don't show it, that type of work, because my uh, background is doing street stuff and, moves, you know, that's usually people. But the objects that I photograph have a story behind them, not all of them, Mm -hmm. But certain ones, I know there's a story because I find certain objects, let's say there's one I took of a homeless guy who would collect all these things and he was in Dumbo and this was 1996. He took over this whole factory that was being broken down, deteriorating, and he had a whole room of like just everything you can think of like a house would have. So I would photograph all those things in there and the story behind it is that certain things I would photograph. I could talk about him and his history because they had written about him years ago in the newspapers. Uh, but other things I look at like just because of the design itself and the reference to the neighborhood maybe. Uh, like certain neighborhoods would have a certain object that you wouldn't find in another neighborhood. Mm -hmm. it, 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 yeah, so it, it really just catches my eye usually. I'm not looking for anything specific. You know, it's like street photography with people is similar because I'm not really having something in my head that I have to catch this moment. I have to, if it happens, it happens, because I can't predict, I can't predict what's well, going to happen. Well, that actually yeah. was uh, what struck me as very interesting uh, thing in comparison to street photography specifically, because uh, I did a fair amount of it myself, not mm -hmm. even close on the, to the level in which you are uh, approaching it, but uh, what is most characteristic uh, part of this general for me was mm. you basically grab what you can. Grab what you, you can. You can't yeah. think, you can't uh, premeditate most of the time what will happen. You have to be in sync, just like you were saying about music leading you Ex through the streets. Exactly, yes. You yeah. have to be in sync with, with what is happening and you have to catch it. While uh, for me, photographing of uh, an animate objects is more of a meditative process. So mm. how it is for you? Is it uh, part of uh, street photography for you or it's something completely new you started four years ago? It's a part of the street photography like when I don't see anything interesting in terms of faces or compositions with people on the streets. So I might be waiting for a long time on a certain spot for something to happen. Then I walk and walk and I see certain objects. And I say, well, me, let me just get into these things for a while and then maybe go back to photograph people. I would do it the same day. I wouldn't just of go course. out and shoot objects, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and since I walk a lot in Manhattan and Brooklyn, maybe four, four miles a day, so I look at certain neighborhoods and I find what's out there in the streets. And I actually am interested in some of the old graffiti or even new graffiti, but not really 
just using the graffiti as a design, but maybe having something in front of it that might work with the graffiti, or just take parts of the graffiti, might a word or two, and just have that referenced and say it was taken in so some part of Brooklyn maybe, or what year I took it, you know. And it's like a historical thing that uh, I try to collect in terms of like neighborhoods too. So in a way for you it has an archival uh, property to Yeah, I think it is because I, I told you in a previous show we had, I work in essay forms, even series actually, yes. I should say series, and I would label the series and have certain objects that might relate to that series and go with it from there and maybe, you know, somehow mm -hmm try to show it to people or, or galleries or whatever. So you, you know. do have a series of the objects that united by uh, some visual idea? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I'll go back to the music idea again. You know, if, if certain type of music is in my head that particular day, I might just find things that are very simple in shape and form, or very like just singular objects, not too complicated. Or then I'll go to the graffiti stuff, and I love how the colors work with graffiti. And I might just incorporate that with some other photograph that I have, and I might do a collage on that. That's another thing that I've been doing, but that's a whole different take on what we're talking about. I, I might use objects in reference to a collage that I might have. Like, let's say I found a, uh, an empty container, and it looked very familiar to have a metaphoric type of a relationship to the graffiti or something like that. You know, it's difficult to say. I have to work on that. When I look at the objects, I have to think of how I can incorporate it in a collage sense, not just the, the oh. object, you know. That's a completely new uh, page and review in what Thomas Clark does. Yeah, that's so a whole new didn't thing. Speak about we didn't collages. speak about that. Because I like to incorporate my images together now in, in reference to a larger context. But it's a relationship with placement and a bigger uh, photograph behind oh. that's that's collage but the objects really it's about the feeling of the color and the design usually I'll shoot color for objects just because it looks more um, surface like oh. you know well it's always curious how uh, the artist himself uh, see his work one way and uh, it might be seen completely different from the outside world because for me when I saw uh, those works mm -hmm. uh, they been a very logical continuation of your street photography. Mm. Even though it's just an object, it still seemed to be talking about people. It was telling a story of somebody who was just was there or will be there in a second. Mm. It seemed to be having shadows of people coming into the photograph while you don't see the person. Oh, so, th so you have an insight that I never been picked up on, you know. Although I might have that subconsciously about something had just happened there or it's in reference to something that happened. Precisely, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, this uh, photograph I mentioned when we was actually talking about having this conversation, oh. the basketball. Yes, yes. For me, it was telling the whole story of somebody who just played it, left it there, to which you can attach a lot of symbolism, mm, uh, which mm. at the moment for me is very close because I'm making series in the same direction of childhood passing, of growing up, mm. of changing their priorities, and uh, mm. something like this uh, really tells a story of this sort. And what's beautiful for me about, about uh, this street photography of uh, an animate objects, mm -hmm. this story can be different for every person because we all have different connotations for the same object. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the more I look at a photograph, I'll know if it has any value. You know, uh, years ago when I took photography class in San Francisco, there was this critique where we had to put up all of our photographs we had taken for the week, and if we couldn't watch it in our room for hang it up in our room for a week, then they're no good. <laughs> that was a, that's how the teacher looked at things. But mm, that's I, I me, mean, it's an interesting it's approach. Interesting, yeah. Although I I think uh, I could go back years later, then I find something that was relevant and why I took it. Maybe at the time it's difficult to make a somewhat of a judgment of your work, you know. Uh, oh. But I see over the years that when I work on certain things, I now can incorporate it into a larger context. Like I might even think about it as you think about it, like a story. What you had mentioned about the basketball seems like a whole mm -hmm. uh, piece, a story that you yes, mentioned. Absolutely. Yeah. For me, that's exactly how it looked. Uh, not just beautiful piece of orange in the middle of relatively gray background. Mm. It really was telling it to me. Well, uh, as one of my uh, 
prints and uh, art collectors actually said at one point there is art that you put in on the wall and there is art uh, that you look at in the museums in uh, re response to what this professor was suggesting to do in order to determine uh, the value of the artwork. And indeed, every artist have uh, certain pieces that uh, would be easier to live with in the one room and some that are not so easy. Mm. If the artist doesn't have any of those, it probably would be very difficult for him to pass to the point when museums actually would be interested. Yes, yes, yes. But I, I agree with you, like certain people who look at photographs, arts in general, they get different interpretations of the image itself. But what's interesting for me when I look at certain photographs by people, photographers, I want to know really about the mindset of the photographer more than the image itself. What mindset was he in? Why did he take that picture or she took that picture? Because I think that's what photography should show, more of the thought process of a photographer. Just for me, because I would want to know that, then I could maybe say, okay, now I understand why this thread of uh, expression is going on, you know. And over the years, I've learned from many masters just by looking at the work that um, I understand their consciousness and their sensibility, you know. Oh, well, get back to this thought after the break. Yeah, okay. Hi, Alex A.G. again from Single Shot with uh, another one, another single trick. Today I want to tell you about uh, using internal flash of the camera. Um, even some very professional cameras have that, but uh, if you would ask a professional uh, photographer, including myself, you would be told not to use it, especially on close-ups and especially when you're photographing people. Reason being, uh, when you do it, the face being overblown. You're getting practically a white face instead of uh, having nice skin tones and nice lighting. Is there anything you can do about it? Actually, yes, there is. You can just put in front of your flash a simple dollar bill and take a picture. What, will, uh, what it will give you? Uh, dollar bill is made of material thick enough to control enough light, and on top of it, it will give you some nice yellow tone to complement the skin tones of the person. This is a uh, single trick by single shot. Watch us on YouTube. got really interesting when we uh, was going into the break, but apparently during the break we spoke about something even more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we started to talk about the collage and uh, we started to talk about the role of uh, combining photos in one piece of art uh, as part of the future of photography and there are, there are some things we apparently agree and disagree on, so let's uh, talk about this if we can a little bit. Yeah, um well, I know your stuff, mm -hmm. and I love it because it's coming from reality, although you're composing, as you might say, fric fiction from reality. Indeed. And it's not all in your mind and imagination. It's something that's actually there that you photographed. Absolutely, and you're incorporating yes. and maybe making a better understanding in an abstract way. Th Indeed. Some people say that abstract is the simplest form to a expression, you know, <laughs> because there it stays lingers in the mind and they can make a reference to that, you know. And the, the thing about street photography and objects, um, it does tell a story uh, for some people, and some people just look at it as a surface thing by shape and design. And for me, it's really about feelings. I, I feel the object, you know, like I feel the object as, even though it's an animate, it's, it has a living presence to me, almost like taking a picture of a person on the street. Indeed. Yeah, and so maybe that's why the emotional part comes into my photographs where you can 
make up the story like you saw because it's, it's something is there psychologically maybe Absolutely, I felt you yes. know and uh, the beauty of it uh, you would show it to ten people and each person will have their own story connected to it especially if you talk about something as archetypical as the baseball I mean uh, yeah, basketball, basketball yeah, exactly. that's yes. true that's, that's true so it's many references to yes the, it's yeah. part of a culture in so many ways mm. and uh, it means so many different things to so many different people so that's true, yeah. true. you could make an experiment, show it to 10 people and collect 10 stories they will tell you about mm, it. That would be right. I could write an editorial about the whole thing. Absolutely, you know? it's yes. Just coming from viewers, yeah. yeah. And uh, with uh, the approach you just described, I would imagine that a uh, certain level of uh, collage and combining uh, photographs would be exactly perfect thing to do. Mm. Because combining two emotions, you're creating something even more complicated, something that never existed in the world, which makes it even more creative. Yes, yes. And sometimes I like to work in metaphors so they can find a direct link with that reference, you mm -hmm. know. Some people can't, but if they know the, let's say the content is revealing certain images or, or, or words mm -hmm. visually, then you put something as a collage and it actually expands the language if you're really good at it. So that the message that you may have is actually revealed, and so you don't get too much ambig amb ambiguous uh, replies from it, which I try to do. I try to like get a message out there, like a document. You know, Indeed. I don't want it to be too ambiguous. You know, if it's too ambiguous for me, I I won't show it for some reason. Even if it's visually exciting to me, that's not enough. I think oh. photography has to speak more than just beauty. Well, uh, my approach as we know is a little different. I do believe that uh, photographs have to contain and project the idea. The only thing I don't believe it have to contain and project only the idea of the original scene you was looking at. Right. And that's from where uh, combinations are coming from because this way it gives you flexibility to say something that neither one of those images by itself would say. Exactly, yeah. But they are related, though, you're, you're saying. It's well, uh, that's the whole beauty of it. Yeah. You can make two completely unrelated people, mm. uh, objects related. One of the uh, series I have is uh, dialogue, and it's two beings, not necessarily two people, who uh, in reality was actually miles and hours and sometimes years apart from each other. Mm -hmm. So these two entities actually talking to each other through time and space. Okay. So there's a storyline in all of your collages, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. There is one uh, everywhere. And uh, that's uh, actually the most interesting thing about collages. You can actually make the narrative of uh, the image to go one way or another. You can actually, by combining two images, reinforce it and make it easier to understand. Yes. Or you can make it more complicated and harder to understand, which actually requires more labor from the viewer to mm. actually comprehend what they're looking at. Exactly. And we know exactly. that viewers usually don't like to put too much labor in that. That's true. Do you so like to provoke? Provoke? People? Provoke, be provocative with the imagery? Um, I wouldn't say so, no. Actually, my intent in art uh, usually is uh, more trying to make uh, this world more uh, positive, not more not better in a provocative way, not to change it, but to show its beauty. Mm. But I know that you, uh, in your street photography, including the inanimate objects, uh, actually have uh, a very serious uh, uh, humanitarian Yes, part. I would agree with you that. Actu yeah. You yeah. actually uh, care a lot about uh, what you photograph and you're actually trying to reveal what you see, and sometimes they are very provocative mm. as a result. Yes, yes, yes. In your photography, I definitely see it, and uh, I would imagine it's not uh, something accidental, it's actually intentional. It's true. Some other people have said the same thing. Like, I would say I, I was like a street photographer who did documentary work, and someone said, No, it's really not documentary work. Your stuff is more about the emotion that you bring out, that you put in, and that you gather from the subjects. That makes a difference, they said. So you can't call yourself, you can call yourself street photographer, but you should never call yourself a photojournalist in that sense. Be that's what I was told by many people because. How about for a poet? Yeah. yeah. That would work. But, I mean, I'll go with that, you know. And oh. uh, as you know, I, as you know I, I work in storylines sometimes, and there's it's a thread, you know. And 
I don't have to like stay within the like we talked about before, beginning, middle, end. I think yes. that can be switched around any way you want if you think about it. You know, oh. and, uh, you know, it, you could say, oh, okay, this ending seems like a beginning again, but you know, because something has to end to begin again. So it's like a continuation on a theme that could be like your collage. Yeah. It may be relevant. But to the viewer, they don't understand that relevance. You understand it, and so they have to think about it. So that's provocative in a sense, you know. Well, indeed. I mean, uh, every collage is really uh, specifically different for every culture. For example, uh, soccer is as important as baseball in European world, mm -hmm. probably even more important. Even more, there are yeah. some people who go much crazy about I it know, there. I know, I know. So when you have a child with a soccer ball and the soccer gates, it says one story for somebody in the United States who was grown in the context of United States culture, but for European, it would be telling a completely different completely story. Completely different, yes. Yes, yes and yes. Uh, uh, I just remembered about that particular one because we were talking about the basketball. The basketball, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. a good point, yes. 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 Certain yeah. objects, I guess, could bring out more about a culture than you would think. Like oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For, for instance, uh, here in the uh, United States, uh, the whole culture is built around cars. So every time there is a car included, it brings a completely different context to the whole thing. Whether it's just a photograph in which you see the car, especially a period car, mm -hmm. or if it's a collage that has a car, you're completely changing the whole thing. It has already completely different connotation. And it depends on which period car you have. I think you're right about that. It, this is a car culture country, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, everything is uh, revolving around it. We don't feel it that much in New York, but uh, outside of New York, that's what the uh, air that the country was breathing since 1920s, I would say. I would say so. In the West Coast, especially when I was there, oh it's yeah. like it distinguishes what culture you are sometimes by the Absolutely. car that you buy and how it's painted sometimes, you know, the high rises mm -hmm. they used to have in the Mexican and uh, Hispanic neighborhoods. Yes. Uh, so it, it tells you a lot about the person, actually. Well, that's yeah, right. probably why a lot of photographers in America pay so much attention to cars. I, I think so. I've seen some <laughs> who photograph them exclusively. That's true. That's All true. right, so we'll have a few minutes uh, okay. after this break to conclude we'll the talk. conversation. Yes. I will be talking about depth of field, so if you're familiar with the concept, you can move on uh, to the next episode. But uh, if you're not, I'm often asked uh, how the aperture works besides just controlling how much light gets into a camera and how light or dark your image is. And in simple words, the larger your opening of the aperture is, the smaller will be distance on which uh, your camera is focused. And if you would photograph something like this branch with the open aperture, you will get uh, the image that is focused only on a certain distance, something like this. But if you close it all the way down and take the same picture, you will get the uh, almost the whole plane, everything like this, to be uh, in focus. And in one case, you will get uh, more uh, focused attention of the viewer on a specific part of your photograph. couple of minutes left and uh, there was new exciting development in uh, recognition justly coming to your photography so can you tell me a little bit about uh, this recent uh, yes uh, I met the editor for a magazine called Blanc mm -hmm. the French word white Blanc okay. uh, I believe it's published in Great Britain although it's sh sold in 30 countries I heard and the interview uh, involved what I did over the last three get de decades in photography, but the editor wanted me to show only work that I did from the 1980s to the 1990s. 
So I gave that work in and she had a long interview with me and it would show my street photography for two decades, which is very interesting. So for me, that's, that's great because it's given me the opportunity to show my work now. And she said she would give me eight pages in the magazine. I said, oh, that's amazing. Thank you. So Absolutely. let's see what so happens with that. You know. When he was preparing those works, uh, did you catch some kind of progression? You know, the magazine is actually a black own and black uh, type of expression they want. Uh -huh. And this issue is called us. So uh -huh. they want to know how certain people of color view the world. And that's why she picked me, because she thought my vision was a little bit different from what she had always uh, looked at as black photographers. So that's oh, why that's she picked me. it's indeed unique. Yeah, it is unique. She said so herself. So I feel it touched my heart, you know, because she picked up on something that I've been working on for years, you know, and oh. it's, it's finally getting out somewhere in publication, which is great. You oh, know. It's actually really beautiful. It's uh, always interesting when you forced by selecting photos for something like this to look at your work at in retrospect. Yes, it took put me it in context. It took me like four hours to find certain <laughs> images, you know, all night I was looking for this. Yes. So uh, we'll see. It comes I believe it might come out in the end of September, I'm not sure. Uh, well we'll definitely would be looking to find it. Oh yes. And it's available in the United States, right? Oh yes, all over Bonds and Nobles, all stores like that, yeah. This is perfect. Well, we definitely should find one, and I personally would want uh, uh, a photograph. Of course, player. absolutely. <laughs> You're one of the first ones you should get. <laughs> I would love for it, yes. Mm. Oh, listen, it's always uh, great to see that uh, talent like yours is getting recognition that it deserved, and uh, we will be looking for seeing more of this. Yeah, as long as I stay healthy, I'll stay on the streets and shoot and, you know, and create new things that, uh, I want to build bridges, you know, like inspire people. That's what it really is oh, about. That's you know. exactly what you're doing best, building bridges building between bridges. what you've seen and what people would think about it 100 years from now. Yes, a legacy. Right? Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you, it Alex. It was really great, great, Thomas. It was great. It was pleasant. found that worth watching as much as I did. I'm Mark for Roundtable. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye.